please take it seriously what I'm about to say. Don't just run away thinking I'm just some crazy Batman guy who's wearing a Batman suit. What I'm about to say is very important about Donald Trump. He's now the president. And uh, there's a Muslim ban going on. A lot of people are upset. A lot of people are saying, why is this happening? Uh, this shouldn't be happening. They shouldn't ban Muslims. Well, guess what? First of all, there's a few points I want to make. And they're very, very important and very interesting. Things that you never heard before. And I assure you of this. First of all, it's not a Muslim ban. Yeah, It's a ban for certain countries where people of different nationalities have come to cause terror, apparently, to America. So he hasn't banned Pakistan. He hasn't banned India. He hasn't banned Indonesia, where two-thirds of the Muslims live. So he has, and many other countries included. So 80% of Muslim countries, 80% of Muslims have not been banned. It's just been 20%. Of certain countries, unfortunately, who have been countries where terrorism has occurred. So that's not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with that. He has his choice. He has his right to do that. He's the president. He can do however he wishes. Each person has his own. Saudi Arabia has his own rules. You know, that's a Muslim country. And they have their own rules and regulations about certain things that can happen in there. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Second thing is that obviously Muslims have different priorities. We have different perspectives, we have different ideologies, we have a different way of life and purpose of life. So obviously there's going to be some sort of uh, clash, the clash of titans will happen. So this is just normal, this thing's going to happen, we, we don't want to shake hands with women, uh, just like I don't want anyone to shake hands with my wife, I don't want them to touch her, um, and because automatically human beings are very basic natured, um, and men are very easy natured, they want what they want. You know, and things happen, affairs happen, that's why there's more divorces, more issues, more affairs in the Western world than there is in the Muslim world. Because we don't have the free mixing, it's a basic fact. And more marriages work. Anyway, that's another subject for another matter. But the main thing we're going for is that there is going to be differences. So if he wants to um, see what happens when Muslims come to non-Muslim countries, they become like the non-Muslims. Because they feel pressured by the community, they want to become like them. So I see in a way this is a very good thing. That Muslims are being separated. Uh, I wouldn't call it separated. I would just call it in a more comfortable zone. Where they're more comfortable in their own place. Where they are. Wherever they are. You know. Uh, so they feel comfortable practicing their religion. Openly. Rather than being. Especially the children. You know. You see the new generation of Muslim children. They become so westernized. That they don't even know nothing about Islam. And they don't practice Islam. And slowly slowly Islam disappears from their life. Which is even worse than. Having the good life because we believe obviously our priority is the life hereafter. We, our success is not to have a nice life in this world, but more importantly, have a nicer life in the life after death. And this life is just a test, you know. So that comes to my third point: that this life is a test. So all the Muslims, or even the non-Muslims, that are um, uh, getting upset that Donald Trump is doing this, everything happens for a reason. We're being tested, you know. And how we react to these tests is what the purpose of life is to find out whether we deserve paradise or we deserve hell you know so this is life is a test these things will happen there's going to be some, wait how did this cupboard was here my wife's been after this cupboard <laughs> so anyway um so this life is a test you know and everything is a sign for us to react to it the quran says that basically human beings sometimes can become as worse as dogs and the dogs are mentioned that when you give a uh, it says like when you give a dog something good it barks and when you give a dog something bad, it still barks. You know, so human beings are like that. We're ungrateful. God gives us something good. We be, we forget him and we become pompous and proud and arrogant. And we don't need him, so we don't turn towards him. So God says, all right, fine. He's not turning towards me. Let me give him something bad. Let me punish him. So maybe by sending him some problems and hardships or some disease or some loss of something, then he might turn towards me. And when that happens, we become angry and upset and we say, why is this happening to me? We do something bad and we react in an evil, bad, evil way. Obviously, not everybody does these reactions, but majority of us, we react in a bad way. So again, we're barking, you know, like a dog. Whether you give something good or bad, we still bark. So anyway, this life is a test. That's the whole purpose of life that we've been sent in this world as a text. Uh, so this is just going to, we just have to think of it positively. And as a test, any problems that happens as a believer, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, is a good thing. A believer always wins. And why does a believer always win? Because uh, when a bad thing happens to him, when a good thing happens to him, is, a, is good, isn't it? Obviously. Having bad happens, then that is good for him as well because that will uh, 
that will change his life. That will be a test for him. That will be a means of him going forward in life. And how's that? Because he, his reward will increase. Even the slightest p- a problem or hardship, or let me check my nose here, a uh, problem or hardship that happens, even a headache, this allows us to get our sins forgiven. Our sins get forgiven through this. Another thing is that if you haven't got much sins, then your stages in paradise are elevated, i.e. you get reward for any problems that you uh, occur in your life. You know, and you, as long as you react to them positively and you turn towards God, and you turn towards Allah through deeds and through good deeds. Another thing is uh, Allah appoints leaders amongst people according to our actions and most mostly to do with the actions of the Muslim, if not all to do with the actions of the Muslims. So if the Muslims actions and their deeds are bad, then Allah will send punishment and hardships and problems. And the Prophet peace upon, peace upon him went in then to meet God, meet Allah in the heavens. Um, he was at one of the levels going on the, on his journey up and um, he was with the angel Gabriel. And when he went to one level, he saw so many things going down and so many things going up from the earth. So he asked the angel Gabriel, what is this? The angel Gabriel said in the nearest meaning, these are the deeds of your ummah, of your people, of your Muslims. If they are majority bad, and it's according to the majority. Uh, so if the majority are bad, then the problems and hardships and suffering and disease and war and famine and all sorts of problems will occur. Natural disasters included. And if the deeds are a majority good, then Allah's help, mercy, uh, uh, love, uh, kindness, all sorts of other good things will come upon the earth and this will affect the whole world. Now why you might ask that, why is it according to the majority, is basically because um, the Quran says in the nearest meaning that the good in this world, we are all tested. Yeah. So even for the test, even if uh, the Muslim good people are being punished. This is also a test for the test for them. See how they react, and they're obviously the bad people are being punished anyway. But the, on the day of judgment, the good people will be separated from the bad. But in this world, they will all be punished according to the majority. This is why the reformation of the ummah, the solution to all the problems in the world, is for the Muslims to become better. You know, for the Muslims. This is why I say all the problems in the world are not because of any non-Muslim or any person. It's because of us. So, and another thing is we have to understand as Muslims, we have a basic belief that God, that Allah, is the one who is in control of each and every good and bad thing in this world. So we know Donald Trump is not elected by uh, by the Americans. A lot of people say it's a conspiracy. He was not really elected. It's all been just a joke. And, you know, it's, it's all conspiracy. Uh, it's all the Illuminati made him or the Russians made him, whatever you want to call it. But as Muslims, we believe Allah is the one who's appointed Donald Trump as the president of the United States. It's not the other way around. It's no one else doing it. Allah is in control. Allah is the one who made him the leader. And Allah makes people leaders amongst people according to the according to the people. If the good people are good, if the majority of the people are good, then the leader will be good. If the majority of the people are bad, then the leaders will be bad. So if correct the people, the leaders will automatically change. If you look at all the life of all the prophets, it doesn't have to be Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Abraham, or Moses, or Noah, or Jesus even, peace be upon him. They try to change the leaders. The leaders never change. That's been the his- in history. That the leaders don't change. So what did the prophets do? They concentrate on the simple people. The people changed slowly, slowly. The leaders changed. But if you don't change the people, the leaders will not change. Let me just change the, change the book. That's a very important note. A lot of people don't know about this. And, and another thing. Everything that ha- I- Everything that happens and I'm connected with it. I've done that already. Sorry about that. <laughs> sign of the Day of Judgment. The Prophet, peace be upon him, already prophesied that this is a sign of the Day of Judgment. The leaders of the world will come together to try and get rid of the, get rid of the Muslims. So this is all happening. We know it. This is uh, Another sign is that the, uh, the person getting killed won't know why he's getting killed. And the person who's killing him won't know why he's, why he's killing. Many people who are joining the army, they're killing people. They don't even know why they're doing it. They're just doing it for fun or they're doing it for other reasons. They don't even know. And the person who's getting killed, many of them are innocent. Bombs are being thrown from the sky. <laughs> And people dying and they don't know why they got killed. They didn't do nothing, innocent people, whatever. And another thing is, the people from the another prophecy of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is that there'll be a huge fire in the West. I.e. something that, fire used to be a thing that used to drag people towards it. People used to go there. So, um, as a source of, this human thing, that humans go towards the fire. Uh, in terms of, I mean, you know, for warmth and, you know, food, you can cook food and uh, they should camp around the fire. Anyway, the prophet, peace be upon him, prophesies that there's going to be a fire in the west that will that will drive or drag the people from the east to the west. 
And that's how you see that. You see people from all Eastern countries uh, moving towards the West because that, they see this is a better life. These are all things that are going to happen. Now, if obviously Donald Trump stops Muslims from entering uh, USA as Muslim, as a personal opinion, I think that's really good because then the Muslims need to make their own country better. They need to also uh, stay in a Muslim environment because then that's easier and more protection for your faith and for your iman in the short temporary life. And more importantly, we should concentrate for the life hereafter. But rather, when you go to the Western world, then you become corrupt and you become like them, nakedness and openness. And even look at the Donald Trump interview about his why, he's saying the things he said about even his own daughter. It's so explicit, so evil and so open. We don't want to have that in our life, you know. And uh, actually, I delete that video, which is which is quite bad, but um, because a lot of people gave bad comments, even though it was the truth. But just Muslims, you know, they're a bit uh, sensitive sometimes. And another thing, Muslims need to sort themselves out. You know, that's all it is all about. And at the end of the day, Prophet people, peace be upon him, already told us that he made a prayer that we should be united, and this is never going to happen. That that prayer was not accepted by the Prophet until the day of judgment. It'll probably never be accepted. And this is why you can't accept expect. Everything to be uh, hunky-dory is not going to happen. There's going to be divisions in everything, even including the Muslims, who are the rightly guided people. If you don't believe me, download the most read book in the world, the Quran from QuranProject.org. That's right, it is the most read book in the world, more than Harry Potter and the Da Vinci Code put together. So do check it out. Download a free copy from QuranProject.org. That's Q-U-R-N Project.org. The link should be in the comments. Check out the two-minute featured video for a summary of the channel. And uh, uh, there's a few other things that I wanted to mention. We keep forgetting, you need to keep in mind that this life is temporary. You have to understand that. So obviously, life is a test and is going to have its down, ups and downs as a test. And how we react is what God is actually seeing. So we need to, you know, we need to sort ourselves out. You know, at the end of the day, this is just, you know, we get so distracted by the things that we see around us. We all want to look at glitter and glamour. We all want to look at enjoyment. And we forget what our purpose is. We're so busy in our lives. That's why I urge you so much. That don't look at all this fake stuff. Everything is just this light that you see on top of me. Yeah. this The light is not coming from the source of the light that's making this bulb work. It's not coming from here. It's coming from the electricity inside it. And where is that electricity coming from? It's going through all those wires that go down to the to a, miles away. Maybe probably 20 miles away. There's a power station. Because we live in London here, so obviously there's the power station is really far away. So anyway, so the property is expensive here. Yeah. So um, so he goes all the way up to the power station, and that's where the power is actually coming from, the source for the light. So the light is not coming from here; it's the light is this coming from the electricity that's coming from miles and miles away. So you got to understand everything that happens in this world. As Muslims, we believe that there's a controller who's controlling it. So don't get upset, don't get uh, uh, crazy, what to do, what's the right thing to do, oh my God, what's the right thing, I don't know what to do with my life, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, why is this happening, turn towards God, change your relationship with God, correct your relationship with God, with Allah, Allah will correct your relationship with the whole of mankind, you will have peace and happiness and satisfaction that no one has ever seen, no one has ever heard of, no one has ever felt, with all the money and riches of this world, all the rich and famous people, they have all of these things, but they're not happy and satisfied. They're depressed, turning towards drugs, drinking, alcohol, rehab, because they can't even go to sleep without taking a pill. So this is why Allah has given us this life. We should try and accept it. And if you have it, don't know much about Islam, I urge you to download a free copy of the Quran, the most read book in the world from Quran Project. That's Q-U-R-A-N Project. Oh, don't just close on me. So do check out, I'll give Islam a chance and uh, to all the haters out there, I love you. The July 17th, 2012 Sheriff Arpaio News Conference was just what Arpaio promised. It was a bombshell, revealing several amazing truths. Number one, the birth certificate that Obama proffered to the nation as his legal proof of U.S. citizenship is a 100% forgery, an undeniable criminal offense. Number two, Hawaii has now been proven to be a 100% illegal birth certificate factory, thus opening a major national security breach to our nation. And number three, if Arpaio's findings are accurate, and if Obama cannot produce a legally verifiable birth document, 
That means that America now has a foreign national as commander-in-chief, having gained that office through criminal deceit. And it also means that as of now, the American media, Congress, and the federal courts are complicit in the whole affair. And as of now, America is no longer a constitutional republic. Washington Times columnist Jeffrey Cooner warned of the earthquake that could result. Quote, Sheriff Arpaio's findings threaten to plunge America into an unprecedented crisis. For if, and again I emphasize if, Cooner says, if Arpaio is correct, then Mr. Obama has perpetrated the most elaborate hoax in U.S. history. A fraudulent birth certificate would mean that Mr. Obama is ineligible to serve as commander-in-chief. His presidency would therefore be legally and constitutionally illegitimate, Cooner said. He went on to say, it would mean that he should be immediately removed from office, impeached. Moreover, every law and executive order passed under his administration would be null and void, Cooner wrote. The implications, Jeff Cooner said, are stunning. The logic is inexorable. Should the president's legal authority be deemed invalid, then everything resulting from that authority is also baseless. The Obama presidency would be overturned, Mr. Obama himself would be facing criminal charges and possible jail time for committing fraud. Mr. Cooner of the Washington Times gets it. Do you? What will you do? Will you post and repost and link and tweet this video? Will you email it? Will you send it to your congressman, your local officials? Will you pray? Will you vote? You see, it really is now up to we the people or America is over. It really is your choice now.